Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode three of Let's Play Aleph. All right, so we are set to start the actual game today. I have not played any of it really. I've I've started the game. I've kind of created a character or went through the intro a little bit. Probably played a total of ten minutes just to see what it was, uh, what the intro was like. So this is going to be blind for all of us here who haven't seen this game. So it does not use the mouse, it uses the number pad and spacebar and escape, so, or Z and X if you want. Let's go ahead, uh, we see what we got here. Let's go ahead and hit new game and uh, get into it. One night, a night like any other, you climb into your soft, warm bed to drift to sleep, expecting tomorrow to be like any other day. But this night, something strange happens. As you drift to sleep, you begin to feel as if you are falling, but you're unsure if it is a dream or reality. All of the colors of the world fade away and you succumb to this strange feeling. You close your eyes for what feels like a lifetime, and then you hear a voice in your head. Hello, seer. Please tell me, are you... I'm going to go ahead and hit mail. Ah, by what name are you known in your world? Okay, so the default name is Martin. Or Martin. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a name I use a lot. In RPGs, Matthew. Okay. Matthew the Seer has a good ring to it. Before you is the principle of wisdom... Wisdom, the knowledge and experience to give proper discourse to rational thought and problem solving. This is but one of the seven principles which guides all seers. Go forth, seer, and take the first step on your journey. Use the arrow keys or WASD to move. Um, I'm going to head and use the arrow keys. Use spacebar, enter to interact with objects. All right. The principle of wisdom, the statues of a woman holding a large open tome of knowledge. The world is full of ignorance, seer, and you are about to stand as a beacon of knowledge to enlighten all, all who, who will hear. But you are not yet a master of this principle. It will be a long path to become truly wise, seer. It takes time, patience, and understanding. Your journey to enlightenment begins here. Read these tablets and begin filling the void of ignorance with wisdom. Okay. A pedestal containing a book of wisdom, the dais of wisdom. In order to learn more of the world, you must master how to navigate through it. As you know, the WASD keys can be used to control the direction you are traveling. You may also use the arrow keys. I'm using the number pad. You can also press and hold the shift key to run. Solving puzzles, answering questions correctly, reading books. These actions will improve your wisdom over time. Once you have mastered the principle, seek out the great Aleph of Wisdom which we have the directions to in the Companion's Home. It is not enough to just know how to navigate the world. You must also know how to progress and organize yourself. You can access the menu by pressing the Escape key. This will allow you to use slash manage items, skills, your retinue of followers, and other options. Having a better understanding of the world is the first step to true wisdom. And now it is time for you to venture forth and learn of the other principles. Okay. <clears throat> Magical Shimmering Mirror. We learned about those in the uh, Companion's Home. Go ahead and touch it. The Principle of Temperance. The statue is of a woman turning her back to a container of gold. In the world there are those who have and those who have little. Temperance is the ability to keep yourself from indulgence. Items which belong to others will have a red name. Those item w items which are free to take will have a green name. Taking what is not yours will greatly impact your mastery of the principle of temperance. Refusing rewards and helping others will lead you to the mastery of it. Now, seer, find that which you may freely have. Okay. We've got an iron chainmail tunic, a chainmail tunic with a low neckline and sleeves that reach past the elbows. Gold, a pile of gold coins with a green name, so... What is this one? Red name gold. 
cheese wheel, a dairy product made of aged milk curds, has a sharp smell and taste, but it's red. Iron long sword, an iron sword that's about four feet long. The pommel has a circular design etched in. Let's go ahead and pick up this gold. Pile of gold coins. Mastering temperance can take a great deal of willpower, Seer. It will be a long journey to master it. Once you have mastered it, seek out the Aleph of Temperance. Now, continue forth. Alright, that's two down. Another shimmering mirror. Principle of Empathy. The statue is of a woman holding an empty bowl. Empathy is the ability to understand the feelings of others. It is a principle that is difficult to master. You must give freely of your possessions and of yourself. Before you there is a thirsty beggar and some water. Pick up the water and place it before the beggar. You can drop items by pressing the I key and then selecting the item to drop. A jar of clear water. We picked it up. Come over here, press I. Water. Oh, thank you, Seer. May the light guide you always. You have begun the journey on the road to mastering the principle of empathy, but there is still much to be done. And that was a beggar. He's a thin man who does not appear to have eaten in some time. Give to others gold when you can spare it. Make offerings of food to statues of empathy. These actions will lead you on the path to mastery. Make offerings of food to statues of empathy. When you have mastered this principle, you must seek out the Aleph of empathy. Continue forth, seer. The principle of modesty. Statue is of a woman with no hair. Seer, you being who you are, do you feel that you are better than all others? Um, I am not. By that answer, you have proven that you understand the basic principle of modesty. To humble yourself before others and give freely to those in need will lead you to the path of mastery of the principle of modesty. Once mastery is obtained, seek out the Aleph of modesty. Go forth in light, seer. Okay. The principle of sincerity. The statue is of a naked woman. To master the principle of sincerity, one must always tell the truth, no matter how difficult it may be. Before you was a woman with a fatal injury, go and speak to her. Gravely injured woman, her skin is pale and it appears she has lost too much blood. I, I was wounded by bandits, stabbed in the chest. Am I going to die? I have a daughter, she has no one. Uh, this is rough. Do I really have to tell you you're going to die? Um, I'm going to be go with the empathetic route. No, you will be fine and so will she. Thank you, Seer. You have given me hope. <clears throat> Giving the dying, dying woman false hope perhaps gave her comfort, but doing so did not lead you to the path of sincerity. Whether you told the woman the truth or gave her false hope, sometimes there are no right or wrong answers. By telling her the truth, you show sincerity. By giving her false hope, you show empathy. At times, the principles might seem at odds with each other, and it is up to you to make the important decisions. When this principle is mastered, discover the Aleph of sincerity. Okay, so I didn't, like, mess up. Go forth, seer. The principle of bravery awaits. principle of bravery. The statue is of a woman clad in armor. To master the principle of bravery, you must not retreat from a fight and show courage when in the presence of fear. Are you ready to face the trial of bravery, seer? I am ready. Very well, we shall begin. Okay, so this is combat. We've got a spell book with nothing in it. We've got a technique with Seer Strike, a light enhanced attack against one enemy that deals damage based on level. Intervention instantly revives one party member. We have Guard, Items, Equip, 
So we're attacking Goblin Grunts. So let's attack the level, and Shift will show their attributes. Let's attack the stronger one f first. Oh, it stunned us. Um, let's do a Seer Strike. Man, we're kind of getting rocked here. There we go. Oh, it's not dead yet. That'll kill it. Let's go Technique. Okay, that's on a cooldown. Um, attack the Goblin Grunt. Boom, critical. Matthew was victorious, 9 XP, 13 gold found. Moldy bread found. You have done well in facing down your enemies, Seer. You have gained experience points and gained a level. Each time you gain a level, you receive attribute points, which can be distributed through the level up menu. Before you are a rune and a bat fang. You may equip the rune and it will enhance your combat prowess. You can equip it in the equip menu. You may use the Bat Fang to augment a skill and add a trait to it. These tasks, of course, are optional. However, augmenting and enhancing can greatly improve your combat prowess. Seek the Aleph of Bravery once you have mastered this principle. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Rune of Regen attaches to a weapon or piece of armor. Bat Fang, a sharp incisor from a large bat. It's stained with what looks like blood. So let's take a look at the menu. Um, while we're in the middle of this, shows us our coordinates, X18, Y13, how much gold we have. There's us, there's a hunger meter. Let's check what items we're carrying. One moldy bread, one bat fang. Um, I guess that's everything. Well, no, that can't be everything. That's just items. Um, skills and spells we already looked at. Oh, we have something called Ultima. A light imbued strike damages one enemy, has a chance to inflict weaken to light and wrath don't know why that hasn't been shown um augmentation so if we do seer strike and put the bat fang there it says skill augmentation drains a small amount of I can't see what that says it's kind of a weird feature drains a small amount of HP from NPs MP Hmm. Well, we'll augment it. Add that to Seer Strike. Doesn't say it does anything extra. That's interesting. Equipment. We have an Iron Longsword. With a description that runs outside of the box. Not good. I don't know how to see the rest of that. Um, wooden targe, a blocky shield about as thick as a sapling, made of oil-treated poplar. Head, armor, boots, cloak, accessory, rune. Could put the rune of regen. Heal swear slightly during each each turn during combat. Very good. Um, status. You can see our stats. 26 strength, 12 defense. Um, HP regen is 2%. Hit rate is 98.9. Critical rate is 5.45. Very good. Counter rate is 8%. Alright, so quite a few stats and stuff to check out. No formation yet. Then there's Aleph. People, places, and items. We have nothing in the Aleph yet. Level up. Okay, so this is where this comes in. We have five attribute points. We can level up any of these uh, stats five times or you know mix it up I'm not gonna do that just yet I'm gonna go ahead and save uh, that is not me 2805 I think that's just a default um, game that you can load or something because I do not remember ever playing that and then there's this which is like I saved during the intro before but I'm pr fairly sure I never played 28 minutes um, system we can look at that Auto dashes walk, instant text, normal battle animation show. Okay, very good. Alright, so we equip the rune. Let's go ahead and hit the shimmering mirror. 
principle of piety. The statue is of a woman bowing her head in reverence. The principle of piety is the convergence of all other principles. It is the measure of how well you adhere to the principles. To disregard the principles is to commit blasphemy. Embracing the principles will set you on the path to mastering piety. When you have mastered the principles, seek out the aleph of piety. Now venture forth, seer, and may the light guide you. Cool. What happens if I click this again? Oh, it just goes through it again. Okay. Boom. Not much further now. Not much further now. That spell scroll will help you find your way. Scroll of Light, a magical scroll that grants spell when used. First circle. To add a spell to a party member's spell book, open the main menu, go into the items menu, select the spell scroll, then select the person who you wish to learn the spell. Every person can have up to six spells equipped at a time. These spells can be interchanged freely outside of combat by going into the skills menu and selecting equip skill. To use a skill or spell from the skills menu, select use skill spell and select the appropriate skill or spell to use. Dark places can be illuminated with the light spell or the use of a torch or lantern. Okay, whoops, so first we have to learn the spell. Scroll of light. Boom. Now we have to use the spell. Or actually equip the spell. Light. Takes 3 MP to cast. Then we have to just... Go here and use it. And it lights up the way. Very cool. I dig that. Can I walk across here? I'm not going to be in a hurry in this LP, so if you guys... I went the wrong way. Unless there's something up here. No. As you know, I play pretty methodically and even slowly at times. Just admiring and absorbing the atmosphere and all the good stuff. So I hope you guys are doing well and ready to check out this game. Pretty neat so far, right? Very excited for things to come. Guess we can't get to those other sections right now. Touch the shimmering mirror. Your actions carry more weight than other people's, for you are a seer of the Aleph. The threat of Anathema's return looms over my world, and only a seer using the Aleph's can hope to overcome it. Master the principles and seek out the Aleph's. They will be your greatest weapon against the coming darkness. And use this to help you in your journey. Okay, we got an Aleph of the Seer. You received the Aleph. Any text that appears in yellow during the course of a conversation can be used by the Aleph to locate. This can be used to find many unique items, people, and places. The Aleph menu is, access is accessed from the main menu by pressing Escape. Additional Aleph entries may be added by reading books. All of my hopes are on you, Seer. May you walk in light. Please select difficulty level. Um, I would play on hard if I kind of knew that it was going to be like not completely crazy. So I'll just play on normal. You will receive no bonuses or impairments. Do you wish to select this mode? Um, sure. Okay, freehold. Oh, nice. Oh, my seer, you've arrived just as the prophet said you would. I've been waiting for years for this day. We can say some stuff. Who are you? Forgive me, my seer. I am Brendan, the steward of the house of the Aleph. Your house. I am here to serve you as I have served the last seer to walk these lands many years ago. Who was the last seer? Ah, Viria was her name. Like you, she came from another place, another world entirely, as all seers have been said to come from. She was noble and kind in her actions, and brought honor to the house of the Aleph. She passed many years ago, though. Fever took her when the world no longer needed a seer. Through history, seers only remained in this world as long as there was a need for them. Where am I? You are outside the house of the Aleph, my seer. This is, by right of law and honor, your noble house. It has remained empty for a number of years since the passing of the last seer. 
Over the years, many of the former Sears' possessions have been sold or bartered away for upkeep and food. It's been a terribly long time, I'm afraid, and very little is left inside. Who was this prophet? Some five years ago, a prophet visited me here and told me that you would be arriving. It had been over twenty years since the last seer walked the halls of the House of the Aleph. The prophet said that your actions would be the most important of all the seers. Though he never did tell me any of the specifics, I am not sure he knew him. He himself knew. I have not seen him since that day. Why such a long wait? A seer might not appear for multiple generations at a time. There is no pattern, no predictability. Only the prophets know when a seer will rise, but sometimes it is many years between. Oh, I notice that you have the seers, Aleph. No doubt that will be useful in your task. Um, what do I do with it? I do not know how it works, but seers in the past have used it to locate important items. There are other Aleph's in the world as well, but I know little about them. It might be helpful to visit a scholar to learn more. Where do I go from here? The prophet mentioned that you of all seers would perhaps be the most important and influential. You are to rid the world of anathema once and for all. But I'm getting far ahead of myself. A great many things must happen before that. The keys which lock away the ebon bones must be recovered. The ebon bones themselves must be brought to the ancient Aleph of Glianessa. Glianessa. But enough of that for now. The town of Ermun is, Ermin is the closest. Perhaps you might start seeking answers there. If you follow the dirt road to the northeast long enough, I'm sure you will find it. Be careful, though. The lands are not safe, and there are many foul creatures. Seek out Lady Molly. She rules the House of the Gauntlet. Okay, tell me about the Aleph's. The Aleph's, yes, there are nine that I know of. There are the seven Aleph's of principle scattered over the lands. They are quite large and very old. There's the ancient Aleph of Glianes Glianessa, and of course the Aleph you hold in your hands now. Although I serve the house of the Aleph, I fear I'm not particularly educated on the matter of the Aleph's. Perhaps you'd be best served seeking out a scribe who has studied the texts of Seer's past. Tell me about Ehrman. Ah, Ehrman. It's under the control of the noble house of the Gauntlet, originally established by a mercenary company out of Eastmark long ago. The town is nestled into a highly fortified area of mountains to the northeast. You should be able to purchase some supplies there. Perhaps Lady Molly would be able to help you. What do you do here? As your humble and loyal steward, I take care of the small and mundane affairs of your noble house. I make accommodations for your retinue, should you acquire one, and handle other matters as necessary. I see, thank you. Some items were left by the last seer in a chest inside. It is in your quarters. The equipment is better than nothing, but I would not advise venturing far and into danger without something more sturdy. Also, a cleric has traveled all the way from Ellen to seek you out. He is inside. Come in and meet with him if it pleases you. Okay. Alright, so... We have some Aleph entries, some found items, the Aleph of the Seer. Water well, a relatively shallow, shallow well with clear water on the bottom. You do not have an empty bottle to fill with water, okay? <clears throat> Let's look around here. Graphics very beautiful. <clears throat> Looks like these are fishing spots. There's a number of fish in this area. We'll go ahead and run. Fishing spot. Sheep. This sheep has not yet been sheared. Slaughter for food. Shear sheep. Can we shear them? We got two wool. There's nothing left to shear from this sheep at the moment, huh? I didn't know we... I thought we'd need a tool for that. Like scissors or whatever, but... Um... Guess we'll shear a few sheep. I don't want to go too far away from the area here. Let's just peek at what's over here. Is that something on the ground? No. Probably get myself into trouble if I go over there without a retinue, so let's come back this way. Beautiful music, too. Hmm. 
So I'm gonna light a smoke, but let's head up in this direction. There we are. And check out the uh, House of the Aleph. And Freehold. <coughs> Hello, there. He wears traditional cleric armor bearing the insignia of the Lightbringer over his heart. Talk, attack, give alms, or leave alone. Um, talk. Praised by the light, you are the seer. Father Thostir told me you would come. It is the seers who divine the will of the light through the Aleph and carry it out. The clerics have prayed to the Lightbringer for longer than anyone can remember, and the seers are the Lightbringer's sword arm. I am humbly at your service, my seer. Um, who are you? I am but a humble servant of the light, as all clerics are. I was trained by Father Eric Thostir, the morning light in Ellen. I prayed that a seer would come and deliver us from turmoil. I've traveled a long ways to meet you. Lothir or Halothir? Uh, what can you do for me? What can you do? I am a cleric of the light. I can wield a mace and shield as well as any knight, and I'm quite capable with restorative magic. If you face the undead, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone more capable than me to remove their blight. Uh, you may join me. The light be praised. I shall not fail you. What is the name of your new companion? <clears throat> we'll go with... Hello there. Alright, cool. Um... Go ahead and check out Hello there. So we're starting to gain a little hunger, as you can see. He's level two. We can um, quickly... No, we can't move between party members in here. Huh. <clears throat> I can't tell the immediate differences. Uh, I've got more strength. Whoops. At 26... He's got more agility at 12 to 9. His luck is 19. My luck is 9. So he's more lucky. Much more lucky. Um, he's got 60 MP to my 51. Alright, do we Aleph him too? Or not Aleph him, but do we level him up too? It would appear so. He's got 5 points. Why do these say seven, seven? Oh, is that what it raises? No. 300? Max value of HP. I don't get it. 50 MP? 10 strength? <clears throat> That's not how much it goes up each point you put in it. I'm fairly sure. Um, but we'll go ahead and save that for right now. Formation, that's fine. Um, equipment, he's got a wooden club. A thick oak club with leather strips wrapped around the grip. The wood is knotted and lumpy. Cloth wizard's hat. A floppy white wizard's hat with a decorative gray stripe above the rim. Cloth robe. A thin robe made of rough white cloth. The, sleeve, the sleeves only reach down to the elbows. Okay. Very cool. Let's come in here. Looks like a doggy. The Hound, a muscular wolf that has been domesticated. One ear is lop more lopsided than the other. Um, talk. <clears throat> Who's a good boy? Woof woof. Um, he can come with us. Come with me. What is the name of your new companion? Midnight. That's good. Alright, let's check out Midnight. Midnight's got 470 HP, but no MP. Great strength at 28. Incredible agility at 35. Great luck, 28. Great defense and resistance. 10% basically critical hit chance. Gets 5% more XP. 5.6%. Very nice. I don't know what some of those mean, like... FC charge. Oh, I guess his his FC charge is at 150%, so that's cool. That's what's used for skills like that I use. The, um, the techniques, the seer strike and stuff. I, we equip all their skills, too, right? Oh, he's got turn. 
Forces all undead enemies to flee may be resisted. Can prevent undead from casting and lower stats. No effect against non-undead enemies. And we saw that some, the greater undead, can't be turned. That takes 10 MP, I guess. Or, that's not a spell. That takes 10 FC. Then we've got Prayer. Rejuvenates all party members by restoring health each turn. His spells are Flash Heal. Instantly restores a small amount of, amount of health to a party member. Bonus health increases with user's level. And Heal 1 restores a small amount of health to an ally. They use MP. And he's also got Divinity. Heals all party members and grants them all protection against attacks. Skill type Unleash. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you when your FC bar gets maximum. Midnight. Wow. Berserk. Places the user in a frenzied state, greatly increasing damage. However, the user, the user loses control. Wound. A precise strike that forces an enemy to gradually bleed out. Stealth. Drastically lowers the chance the user will be targeted by enemies and increases the user's strength. Howling Cry. Howl out to a fellow pack members for aid. Wow, he's loaded. Double Strike. Strikes two enemies with regular attacks. Damage is based on the user's agility. Which is even higher than his strength. These all use FC, though. Ignore Armor. A strike that completely disregards an enemy's defense. And that would be everything. Wow. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and save again. Um, that's it for now. Can we... Whoops. Can we check any of this? Nothing in the barrels. Lit fire. We can douse it. Crate. Huh. So there's bread, sausage, apple, cider, egg, milk, flour sack, mead, ale, cheese wedge, round bread. So I guess we should go ahead and take that all. Two crates here. Cheese wedge, lettuce, potato, round bread, apple, chicken, and egg. Whoops. I guess this will be our traveling food source. Very cool. Let's come down here. So the barrels don't seem interactable. Um, bookshelf. Ooh. Cool. Book, Death Cap Findings. Book, Undeath, Putting the Dead to Use. Book, Patrolman's Log. Book, The Coming of the Dark Father, Part 1. Book, Tithing the Cairns. I will go ahead and grab all these. And we'll read them in an episode. Book, Water Elementals. A Call to Arms. Demons of the Deep. The Grimoire, Part 7. Lightbringer. The Hellbrant Family. Um, I guess our inventory is unlimited, right? Go ahead and grab all these. Is there like two sides to it? No. Someone's standing there. And a reagent cabinet. Oh, wood ash, ginseng, leaf of heather, two lockweed, a sparkling s sand, a bright lock, a pure blossom, water, and three frost leaf. We'll take them. May the teller. She has runic tattoos on her hands and feet, and her clothing is of lesser quality. Um, talk. Greetings, seer. Have you come seeking knowledge of the principles? To master the Aleph, you must master the principles. Okay, I don't think we have to do any of this yet. Um, tell me about bravery. The act of bravery requires you to take action in spite of your fear. The opposite of bravery is cowardice. Engage in battle with your enemies to master the principle. Fleeing from battle will ensure your cowardice. Okay, this will tell us more, like, um, pertinent facts as to how to raise or lower it. Tell me about sincerity. Acts of kindness and truth lead to sincerity. The opposite of sincerity is artifice. Speak truly and give to others Give to others to master this principle. Lie and steal will ensure your artifice. Wisdom. To distill simple truths of life and death is the nature of wisdom. The opposite of wisdom is ignorance. Enlighten yourself through conversation and tomes to master this principle. Temperance? To deny yourself earthly rewards is to know temperance. 
the opposite of temperance is indulgence, turn away gifts and give freely at the cairns of the seven. To master this principle, steal to ensure your indulgence. So pretty basic, you know, common sense. Uh, modesty. Modesty is to be humble and not boast of yourself. The opposite of modesty is arrogance. Deny rewards and donate gold to master this principle. Steal from the good simple folk of the land and boast of yourself to ensure your arrogance. And don't forget, we could do the opposite of these and join the evil. But I'm not going to do that. Tell me about piety. Your faith in the will of light is piety, which you will show through your actions. The opposite of piety is blasphemy. Give freely, do kind deeds, and you will master this principle. Denounce the light and take what is not yours, and no blasphemy. Tell me where I currently stand with my principles. You have fought some battles and defeated your foes thus far, but few would say you truly possess bravery. You have spoken some mistruths or taken what is not yours, but you are not... F I have... But you are far from yet being in the grips of artifice. Speak honestly, seer, and be better known for your sincerity. You have started to show your good nature, but you have yet to do anything that would make the folk of the realm truly believe in your piety. You strive for modesty, but have only begun the path to mastering this principle. You have given freely of yourself, but not much of yet. You have just begun traveling the path of temperance, and it will be a long one. You have begun making headway along the path to wisdom, but you still have a ways to go to master the principle. You listen to the plight of others and have shown charity, some charity. However, you're still far from mastering the principle of empathy. So basically, we're like at zero with all those, pretty much. I don't know what I took, what wasn't mine, though. I don't... I don't know why it said that. Music gear, a specially crafted mechanical piece which plays music when placed in a music box. You do not have the music box in your possession. Okay, our bed, bookshelf, a guide to attributes, the Aleph of principles, anathema. Take all those. Here's the chest. Okay, we'll see what we got here. 300 gold, scroll of cartography, two mutton, one rope. Oh, maybe I wasn't supposed to take all that food and stuff. Were those crates red? Maybe I just, I overindulged there. Huh. One rope, one iron longsword, one leather boots, one leather helm, one leather tunic, a music box, five torches, five bread, a scroll of home. Oh, there's more down here. A wooden targe and a rune of the automaton. Four of them. Hmm. Wait. Remove all. Let's put the music gear. The music gear is placed in your music box. Okay, place both of them in our music box. Alright, let's see what we've got here. We weren't supposed to take all that food, I guess. Small box that plays music when used. Select which music gear to use. Aleph main theme, House of the Aleph. Hmm. Okay. Alright, um... Can I dual wield? No, it would appear not. But we can put on gear... Um, Rune of the Automaton The party member equipped will automatically engage in combat um, Don't want to do that So let's Put on the Leather Helm It's going to give us 10 HP, 2 defense 1 resistance, 1 agility, 2 luck A helmet made of thick brown leather It is, has a triangular cut of leather On the forehead for decoration Armor, the leather tunic, a tunic made of rough brown leather. It has extra strips of leather in the front that serve as padding. Two luck, two agility, two resistance, three defense, 14 HP. And finally, the leather boots, strong, sturdy boots made of brown leather. They fit snugly around the ankle. Two luck, one agility, one resistance, two defense, and 10 HP. Okay. So we didn't pick up anything else, right? That was... A wooden targe. So I guess we can give that to you. It gets 25 HP and 5 defense. Maybe we should share the defense with him, no? Give him the boots. What's our defense now? 19, okay. Alright, that's pretty good. Um, 
that's everything in here. Steward Brendan, a short man with a stout build, the steward is tasked with maintaining the affairs of the house whilst his lord is away. Greetings, my lord. How may be of service? So we can leave a party member here, absolve my crimes, and remind me what I'm doing again. Never mind. Kyle Sword, somewhat disheveled, he stands tall and broad of shoulder. His armor is a mismatch of pieces taken from on the field of battle. Ah, my seer, you've arrived. I am sure you're wondering who I am and what I am doing here in Freehold. I am Kyle Swords, formerly a knight in service of the king. I no longer serve him, and instead I find myself here offering my service for a fee. There is less honor in mercenary work, but definitely more gold. And last I checked, honor can't buy me ale. But I am more than just a mere mercenary. All great lords and ladies from time to time need extra bodies in their retinue. And as you're now full-fledged mercenary captain, I can make this happen for you. You will now have the ability to call forth mercenaries in combat. They will act like any other member of your retinue, except they do not take direct orders from you. However, they will do everything that they can to aid you for the fight, which you pay them for. Which you then pay them for. Each mercenary enlisted will come to your aid for a cost. Since I am first in service to you, my lord, the fee for my services will be quite small, I assure you, as a gesture of, gesture of good faith. Further, as you grow stronger, I will work with your mercenaries to ensure that they, too, are progressing and becoming better. You will just need to check back with me periodically here at Freehold. So, whenever you need an extra sword arm in combat, I will be available. Any other mercenary you gain in your service, I will train and make sure they are the best that they can be. You now have the enlist skill, which can be used in combat to summon forth mercenaries to fight at your side. Only two mercenaries at a time can be on the battlefield. Mercenaries will gain in strength as you level up. However, you will need to speak with Kyle's swords to make them level up. In order to use the enlist skill in combat, you'll have to equip it by opening the main menu, selecting skills and spells, and then the character. After that, select equip skills to equip it. So what I don't understand about that, though is does the mercenary stay after the battle or is it just one time thing during the battle that's also an unleash skill from one fc ultima okay um looks like that's it here big table oh blacksmith anvil Lit fire. Anvil. An anvil used for crafting weapons and armor. We can do blacksmithy. Well, we can't, though. We don't have recipes or anything. Um, so I took, I took too much from the... Re those were her reagents, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe that was just like a little bug. Because these are green. So the green stuff I should be able to take. Um, nothing over here. Alright, that's it for the uh, House of the Aleph. I'm going to go ahead and save here. See how long I've been playing. 35 minutes. I guess we could... Mm, we could check out the Aleph. Lady Molly. We can tag or view. That's interesting. Aramon and Ellen, the two townships. Um, we could read the books next episode. Potions, food, ingredients. Oh, the spell of cartography. I forget what cartography does. And then there's home, which teleports us back to Freehold. And cartography makes a visual map of the nearby... Uh, stuff. Field items. Okay, so there's a lot of categories here. We have a lot of books to read. Let's go ahead and use Scroll of Home on me. And I guess Scroll of Cartography on me as well. And if I were to say... Do I have to equip them? I do. So we want home and cartography. 
Magically map surrounding location displays a map of it only works outside for 2 MP. Home is 25 MP. Teleports the party back to Freehold. Okay, very good. Um, augmentation is done. So there's books. So let's go ahead and, and look at the level up now. Oh, it tells you how much it adds. Plus 25, plus 8. Okay. I'm going to have to get better acquainted with the... Oh, you have zero... Um... You have one intelligence. You have zero attribute points. Halothir. I think it's Halothir. Um, has five. And I don't know what to give him yet, because, like... These are all plus one. That's plus 25, plus eight. Because I don't know what he looks like in combat yet. Um, yeah, he's got 21 strength, which is good. Good luck. Could probably use more intelligence, more resistance, more agility. Um, and how much damage is he doing in combat? It doesn't really say what the damage is. Hmm. I guess it increases his strength by 11, so that should tell you right there. But anyway, I don't feel comfortable leveling up just yet. But I will save here and say thank you for joining me. I hope you found this interesting. Oh man, I'm excited because we are going on a super adventure here. Um, we'll get to exploring this next time. So thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll join me on this journey. It's going to be a lot of fun. For sure, we're going to explore the world of Aleph and just have a blast doing so. So, hope to see you guys next episode. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. Much love, peace, and joy, and catch you next time with more of this obscure gem, Aleph. See you guys then.